Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Mario Picciardo and in this video we are going to be talking about liking tendency. Uh, I also wanted to show you guys a copy of the book that we're talking about. Uh, again, it's Poor Charlie's Almanac. I'll put a, a link to it uh, in the description down below so you guys can go take a look. Maybe you want to check it out for yourself. I'll put a link to Amazon or something down there. Um, this is an affiliate link, which means that if you do buy a copy of the book, uh, I do get a bit of a kickback. Well, no, it's actually, I'm probably, I'm actually not going to put an affiliate link on. Um, I don't, and I'm not even signed up for that. Uh, but in the future I might, uh, anyway, here is the book that you can see right here in front of you. This is uh poor Charlie's almanac. Um, this is the third edition of it. This is, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this is the best book. Um, I have ever read and I read a lot of books. <laughs> um, so I just want to show you here, if I go to the back, um, at the end of it, it, ex it explains to you what the, uh, what the biases are. So here, here's, uh, it's talk 11. It's at the back of the book. It covers everything that we're talking about here. Uh, the book is also beautifully illustrated. Again, uh, I am not getting a kickback or anything like that for recommending this book to you. I know it's hard to see, uh, so that's fine, but this goes through and it talks about the uh, the biases. It goes from one all the way up to 25. Now, there are more than are spoken about in this book. Uh, Charlie Munger doesn't cover all of, all of human psychology, but what he does cover is the 25 most glaring uh, human tendencies that he's noticed throughout his career. Oh, that was a bit of a struggle. <laughs> I was trying to put that away while talking. Um, the thing with this mic is you have to be close to it. Otherwise, as you can see, you kind of start to lose definition. So, uh, yeah, I want to make sure I'm close to it, especially if I do this. See, where it kind of starts to drop off a little bit as well. Uh, so, so I'm like reaching over. Um, so anyway, uh, so we'll, we'll just jump straight into it. So the first tendency that we're talking about, well, the only tendency that we're talking about today, I was thinking about also doing, uh, disliking. We might just jump straight into it. Um, but anyway, uh, you, you can see by the title of this video right now, if it has either or, or whatever. <clears throat> All right. So liking tendency, um, th this is kind of the format that we're going to have going here where we describe the tendency, uh, give some examples for, cause I think that's the best way to kind of go through and to understand, uh, what's really going on here. Uh, and then we'll break it down into, uh, the practicality of it and definition. I like to keep it short and sweet. So without further ado, let's do it. Let, let, let's just jump straight in. So. Uh, the liking tendency is, I mean, it's, it's actually liking loving tendency. Okay. And that is, that is telling you that when you like or love someone, what do you think about? Ladies and gentlemen, do you think about their faults at all? Or when you think about someone, do you think about all the feel goods that you get from that person or from, um, just that environment of being around that person, their, their uh, sense of charisma, security, love. All right, so I just want you guys to sit there and think about it. I mean, when you think about someone you like, think about your best friend, think about your mom, think about uh, someone that's very dear to you. Do you think about their flaws more than you think about their, their how, how, how good they make you feel, how comfortable? Okay, and so that, that that that's really what we're trying to get at here. This is this is pretty much what this tendency is saying now. Um, it 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 is it is one of those tendencies that does have a greater impact on our day to day than we realize. So, for example, if if we're an employer, right, and we have a new hire, um, the chances are that with with this new person that we're looking to bring into the office, that we're going to treat them like well, you know, let's say we're starting a new business, right, as our first example. Um, and we have a selection of candidates and let's say candidate one is all right. We don't really jive with him too well. We don't have much in common with the guy, but he has skills. His skills are pretty, pretty good. He fits the job description. Now we know we have someone coming on later in the day, so we don't want to jump the gun, but you say, you know, thank you. We'll let you know about the future opportunity if we decide to move forward with you. So we don't really tell the guy, you know, we don't say, okay, yeah, or no. Now imagine that there's a second person that comes by. Okay, it comes back later in the day. And now for person B, um, who's coming up, we, we have the same conversation. But you know, this person's a little bit less experienced, but we really jive with the guy. 
You know, we're about getting things done, you know, showing up, hitting, hitting the bar, going, going, going 10 miles, going the extra mile, making sure things get done. Everything's, you know, the first guy who came in is like, oh, you know, he, he has the skills. He can do it. He's qualified. Uh, but the guy is like, eh, you know, he's not, you know, he's, he's more of like a, listen, I'm in at, I'm in at eight. I'm out at five. That's it. Okay. I'm not doing extra work. I'm not staying late. This is what it is. That's just how he is. So, and then, so now we have our guy who shows up. This this other guy shows up. Let's say he throws up shows up at three three p.m. So we had the we had the 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 noon guy, okay, who's all right, great skills. Now the new guy shows up. He's 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 doesn't have the degree, okay, but we like him. He has their style. He's he's all oh, we're gonna sit here. We're gonna get it done. We'll make sure that we get it. Boom 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 boom. I don't have the certification, but I'm here to fight for it. And we're we can do this work. If I like you, right, right, and people like people who are like themselves, or who are like how they want to be. All right, that's what Tony Robbins says. So, you know, if 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 I like the guy, the second guy, chances are I'm going to overlook what he isn't qualified at, what the qualifications that he doesn't have because I think that he'll grow into them because I like him. Now, that doesn't mean that hiring someone who necessarily does not have the qualifications cannot get those qualifications over time. You know, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't hire someone who doesn't meet your qualifications if they are a right fit because they can learn how they can learn the skills on the job. Now, if that's a job where that is reasonable. But the point is to say that sometimes, you know, we have a tendency to uh, judge people based more on how much we like them than whether or not they can do the job. Because let's say six months down the road, you know, that the, this guy that we hired, let's say we go with the 3 p.m. guy, that we go with the afternoon guy, the guy that was always with us right from the head start. He can't keep up or the guy just doesn't have what it takes to produce the quality that we need. OK, so now we made a decision on a guy because we liked him. But he wasn't the right fit. He just wasn't. So, you know, this is this is one of those things that we really have to think about. I mean. This is, uh, you want to make sure you hire the right person for the job. And now we can go into two and three. So this is where it gets a little bit different. So example two, if we have an abusive spouse, right? So if I'm dating uh, Mary Jane, you know, and Mary Jane is, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I like her, obviously. You know, we're together. Uh, and <laughs> uh, however, you know, when I'm spending time with Mary, you know, she, uh, there's jabs at me. Let's say she, uh. She makes fun of me, you know. Let's say she's oh, you're so you're too short, you're too short. You know what I mean? No, no, that's not in and of itself wasn't being abusive, but um, I mean for some people out there, I'm sure it is. You know, it's offensive, but uh, yeah, look, it, look, it is what it is. You know, you can only be so much. But uh, let's say that the that she's out there and she's uh, I don't know, I don't even know. Uh, she slaps you, she slaps you in public. She beats you when you get home. I don't know. All right. But you, you know, you, you tend to downplay that because you love her. You know, it's like, oh, she'll change. I can change her. I can change. You know, it's, uh, it's not so bad. Listen, I'm not saying that that can sometimes happen. You know, someone is abusive. You guys can work it out. It's, you know, it, it, it's a very dicey subject, right? Abusiveness. And um, do you think you can work it out? The person that's a dangerous, it, it can be a very dangerous thing. But the, the, the point I'm trying to illustrate here is, and, and maybe not in the best way I'm, I'm, I'm ending up illustrating it, but uh, the idea that, um, when you like someone, even if it's a spouse, you tend to downplay the fact that they can be or are being abusive to you psychologically, physically, or otherwise. Um, you know, you might say, oh, it's just my house. She's always like that. It's fine. You know, it's always, she, I love her, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, uh, so, the, so, you know, it's important to be mindful that, especially around people that we like, that we are judging them objectively for certain things, you know, you want to make sure you're not being taken advantage of. You want to make sure that, uh, you know, you're not being sold a bag of goods that isn't good, you know. So uh, the third example that we have here is a little bit different. I put it on here because I want to capture a different idea for this for this tendency. So gambling is something that everybody understands, right? I hope I hope you understand what gambling is. So if you don't, uh, if you don't, that's a good thing, or 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 very bad. Uh, so if you have the gambling, uh, so if we go into the gambling scenario, right? Let's say I'm a gambler, okay? I was being abused, now I'm a gambler. 
my life's falling apart. So uh, if I'm someone who gambles a lot, okay, now I might not see gambling as something that is necessarily bad because I have, because uh, I like to do it. I like to go out. I like to do, to, to put my money on the line. Yes, yeah, sometimes do I get really bad results? Yeah, I have tens of thousands of dollars in, in debt now because of my habit, but I don't see it necessarily as bad. Why? Because I like to do it. I get good results or I get a good feeling when I go out there and do it. Okay. So you have to look at it from the point of view of a gambler, right? They don't see what they're doing as inherently bad, as inherently destructive, or they see it as something that they have full control of. They don't realize what it does to them. Okay. So uh, I, I wanted to use this other one because the gambling example, because it kind of gives you a different idea. Listen, like the liking, loving thing doesn't necessarily have to be for a person. It could be for an action. It's whatever you associate with a good feeling. Okay. And then, and that association of anything with a good feeling is in itself what creates the liking, loving tendency. Okay. And, and all that means is that you're distorting the reality of what something really is on a basis of how something makes you feel. Okay, which is our definition here. So the definition for liking, loving tendency is the fact that we don't see things objectively for how they are because we're putting a mask over it. In this case, rose-tinted glasses of looking at things better than how they are because they give us a good feeling. So yeah, I, I hope this helps you guys, uh, this one in particular, um, because it's one of the ones that you can listen to but not really understand or think you understand it, but maybe need a little bit of a of a push through just to get it. As I was sitting here and, and thinking up this example, uh, it made a lot of sense to me. Uh, now, the, 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 before we skip over it, the, practic the practicality of it is, is uh, I wrote here, influencers. Now, an influencer is someone who is uh, someone that you listen to. I, I was really trying to think, you know, well, what's the really practical lesson here that everyone can take home? If you, an influencer is anybody who you listen to that you trust, okay? By definition, if you listen to someone and you trust and you trust them, you have rapport with them, which means if they're certain about something, you have a, they have a tendency to influence you because of how sure they are, because you have rapport with them. So think about anybody that you like. It could be a mayor. It could be a congressman. It could be Joe Schmo down the street, your old gym coach, anyone. Okay. Now, they're influencers because you like them. There's something about them that is either like you or like how you want to be, okay? Now, the fact that you have rapport with this person means that you're willing to listen to them. Now, the, the, the idea of the liking, loving tendency here is to say that, listen, even though, you know, you this person, uh, you know, you like this person, make sure that you take a little bit of a grain of salt with something that these people say. Why? Well, because these very same tendencies that we're going over are tendencies that these, that this person, woman, man, I don't know, uh, also has to deal with. So it's not just an issue that you or I are dealing, you or I am dealing with, but it's an issue that we are all uh, having to go through. So as you sit here and we go through the lessons, um, keep that in mind. That it's not just you or me who's sitting here trying to learn something new or uh, experience something new, but the fact that you learning these tendencies is making you better cognitively, but also um, it it allows you to gain an awareness for other people's errors of thinking as well. Now, it doesn't say that that doesn't mean that when someone tells you something, you shouldn't believe them. It just means you should need to be mindful of the fact that well, how they got their information may be incorrect. So let me just be very neutral about it. All right, guys, uh, this video ran a little bit longer than I would have liked. Uh, uh, so we'll pick up with the disliking, hating tendency next, uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, I'll put the link down for, uh, Poor Charlie's Almanac if you guys want to check it out. There is a lot of great information in that book. I highly recommend giving it a shot. I highly recommend jumping on there, checking, checking that book out, uh, so on and so forth. It's not an affiliate link, so don't feel like I am recommending it to you just because I am. It's an excellent read. And it covers way more than just human biases. It also covers um, 
I mean, everything. I mean, this guy goes back and says, well, if he was young. Now, you have to understand who Charlie Munger is. He's someone who's, who's a business partner of Warren Buffett. Men's made billions and billions and billions of dollars. And he goes back on and over the course of his life. Now, this guy, you have to understand, he reads every single day. This man uh, has learned a lot of things. He's made incredible amounts of money. Um, and he really looks back at his life and he says, well, these are the things that I've learned. You know, and if I could have went back, this is how I would have done it. Um, essentially, he talks about different ways of thinking, different ways of making decisions, different ways of making judgments. And you know what? We'll probably jump into those in future videos. But for now, uh, guys, I'll leave you with that. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.